let's talk about how Vercel builds Vercel with Vercel. <laughs> so this might not be obvious, but actually we build our entire product using our own tools. So everything we do, we're dogfooding not only Next.js, our framework, as well as the rest of our product suite. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of the different products and features that we use to build Vercel using our own products. So first let's start with the code. So we use GitHub, that's where we store our code for our applications and we deploy using a turbo repo. So we have a mono repo that has a bunch of different properties for a lot of our main websites. And what you're seeing here is a PR that I made a few weeks ago to make some changes on the Next.js website. And I also made some changes on the Vercel site while I was here too. So it was nice, they were both there. I could just kind of find and replace a couple things. So in this PR, I pushed up some changes, I iterated here a little bit, and we see the Vercel integration comments back on the PR and gives us a unique preview deployment for this environment. So for my changes, I get a live URL that can go test things and verify changes look right, share it with other people on my team for feedback. And then ultimately, if this is good, the PR gets approved, it gets merged, and we can kick off that deployment for production. So the core start of how we build on Vercel is around the code that's integrated into a Git version control system. Now, there are other parts of our application where we usually like to start with some kind of AI enhanced workflow. So we have a tool, we have a product called V0 that allows us to really quickly generate React code that uses Tailwind CSS. So for some of our more back office admin type tools, this can be really helpful to use. We don't yet use it on our main Vercel dashboard, but I think it would be awesome to slowly move towards that as well too. So for example, let's say I wanna build an admin dashboard that allows you to manage a list of deployments. For example, we might wanna have our support team look up a specific customer's deployments when they ask, hey, I'm running into an issue with this one deployment. Could you help me get more context on what happened? Maybe we have a back office tool that allows them to view that deployment or view the outputs from that deployment and be able to assist them with that support journey. So for our back office tools, they're all built with React, they're all built with Next.js, they're all built with Tailwind, and we can use V0 to really scaffold out not only the initial application like this, but more realistically, pieces or smaller components on the page as well too, since something already exists. But the cool thing about this with V0 is that this is, you know, real React code. You can copy paste this into our application. It's already set up with, you know, the component libraries that we want to use, the styling solutions that we want to use. And you can see here, it, it gives us a few different options for what we want to choose from. Um, you can tell that this one feels uh, very inspired by Vercel, which, <laughs> you know, makes sense. This layout looks like what I would expect. This one looks... Uh, very similar to what I would expect, which is awesome. Uh, you know, let's say I wanted to go with this one. You know, we've even got some of our, you know, training data that our AI team has put in here. And I say, yes, this is what I want. I click code, I can copy paste this in. So that can really help kickstart the iteration velocity for our project. Okay, so going back to the example where I made some changes to the Next.js site, typically after creating deployment, you see a page like this. This is the deployment summary. So we get to really dig into everything that happened during an deployment, what the environment was, what the domains that get assigned are, what the actual outputs of the build process are and how they get uploaded. So for example, if we want to dig in here, you know, building for the Next.js site, looks like we had a five minute build. You know, we pre-rendered and we generated a bunch of static assets. We can see the deployment summary here of everything that gets created. So, you know, there's about a thousand static assets that get created all the HTML, JavaScript, CSS files, images, fonts, you know, all that good stuff. And you know, we can dig in here and see all the different images for the docs and all those specific pages that get created. So this is just a nice way to visualize the outputs from actually running a build, uh, regardless of, of what framework you're using. But in this instance, it's showing us Next.js and what was created here. So this summary page is a really nice way to get an overview of what happens when you make a deployment. Now, moving on from here, our deployment is live in production. Maybe now I'm wanting to understand a little bit more about how things are going. So this could be on the usage of the website or it could be on the performance or reliability of the website. Let's say it's just on the usage. I wanna understand the traffic to my website, where it's coming from, what they're clicking on. Well, with web analytics, I can see all of the different visitors, 
over the past, in this instance, 30 days. And you can see that, you know, Monday through Friday spike when people go to look at the Next.js docs and then when they log off for the weekend, which makes sense. Um, you can look at visitors or page views. You can see top pages. You can see refers. You can filter by environment. You can change, you know, the number of days that you want to look at. So this is just a really easy way to be able to not only drill into your traffic, see who's online right now, but then also if you want to log custom events like people click on a specific button or people fill out some forms, you can track a conversion. You can also do that here as well too. Now, if you want to understand the performance side a little bit more, so the field data or the real user data after you've deployed your application, we have a product called Speed Insights. So Speed Insights reports instantly out on Core Web Vitals data. So if you're looking at the Chrome user experience report or the data that comes from the HTTP archive, this is usually in a rolling 28 day window. So you have to wait to get that data back. If you want this instantly up to date information about how your site is performing based on kind of the same rubric that Google is grading you on or the search engines are grading you on, you can use Speed Insights. So here we can see overall the real experience score. We have 100, so that's great. But maybe I want to click into, you know, layout shift and I want to look at different percentiles, maybe P90, P99, what's happening here. Maybe I want to see if there was any, you know, specific deployments here so I could maybe pop back to the last seven days, for example. I can see we have some deployments in these different areas and I can see the specific routes that were created. Looks like, you know, mostly in the docs here. Um, I can look at interaction to next paint, which is a a newer Core Web Vital. I can look at time to first byte. All these different things here that allow me to really drill in and understand traffic at a more granular level and even understand, you know, specific geos where maybe our site could be better optimized for. So we can also kind of burn that down by country. So we can say, okay, we need improvement in these specific areas. Maybe we want to have different caching headers or we want to reduce the weight of our website. So that's super helpful as well too. Now, what if we want to understand whether things are going well or not? Maybe there's an issue. Maybe we're trying to debug something. Maybe we're just trying to look at traffic patterns on a more granular level. Well, we can pop over to logs and look at both instrumentation that we've added ourselves, as well as just normal traffic logs that are reported out on Purcell's edge network. So specifically here, I've filtered down to look at requests to the docs. We can see that there was you know, a number of 200s here. There was a number of 304s. I can click into the individual rows, see the time and the status, you know, where the requests came from, what the user agent was, if it was in a preview environment or in a production environment and so on and so forth. And we have a bunch of different filters on the left too. So you can, you know, really drill into exactly what you want to see. And sometimes when you want to drill in yet another layer, we also have kind of an extension of logs through monitoring, which allows you to run queries over that information. So for example, here, I'm looking at request to nextjs.org. I'm grouping by the region, and this is over the last three days, for example. So we have a ton of traffic from Germany and India and Singapore and Sweden and France and the US and really all over. So that's awesome to see. Uh, shout out to our global Next.js community. And we can kind of visualize that traffic. We can you know, drill in on errors or drill in on IPs or specific user agents. Really, you can do whatever you want inside of this query builder. Next, let's talk about how we safely roll out changes. So how do we make larger changes to both, you know, the Next.js site or the Vercel site uh, or the Vercel dashboard? Well, we like to do this behind feature flags. The great thing about feature flags is we're decoupling shipping code from actually releasing features. And I'm going to show you how we do this in a pretty unique way. So we have a product called Edge Config, which allows us to store essentially JSON data basically directly in the Edge network regions. So really, really fast to read to this basically JSON file. And inside of here, we store things like critical redirects or flag data, feature flag data. So let me just show an example of this. On a landing page here, we have this for sell slash AI page, you know, nice looking page. Down in this toolbar that pops up, which we have shown for essentially employees of Vercel. We have a conditional check. Okay, I'm on this domain, you know, conditionally load this toolbar, but this toolbar also shows up on all your preview environments. You're gonna notice there's a couple things happening here. Um, one, we're in draft mode, gonna come back to that. But two, we can toggle feature flags. So this hasn't been released yet, but you're getting the early scoop here. Uh, for example, I could click into feature flags 
and I could say there is this RSC header. Enable RSC header. Now I've forced this feature flag to be true, even though this feature flag is coming from a remote location. In this instance, our flags are stored in launch darkly. And I turn this on so that I can start dogfooding it before we roll it out to the rest of our customers. So we're slowly moving parts of our application from client components to server components as we optimize different bits of the dashboard. And this has allowed me to really test that out. So pretty cool here how it can read in all those flags from LaunchDarkly and kind of test things as I'm queuing our products directly from this Vercel toolbar. Speaking of the toolbar, let's talk about that draft mode. So I mentioned this eye icon here allows us to view draft content. In this instance, this draft content is coming from a remote location. So our content management system, which is contentful. And I'm looking at our change log and I'm seeing, okay, it looks like pretty soon we're going to be launching some new rules for conformance. And we displayed this in the UI as a draft. Now, if I click into a specific change log, here's another one that we're going to launch soon. I can see this draft content directly coming from Contentful. I can say, you know what, actually, let's change this to be the title of you know something else. I can leave comments here for my team. I can you know, tag them in if I want, which is kind of nice. They get emails and get notified by that. Uh, I can integrate with my issue tracking systems like Ajira or GitHub Issues or Linear, for example. But let me show what this looks like when I'm viewing draft content. So if I go into our content management system, this could be really any content management system you want to use. And I make some changes in here. Um, you're going to notice on the right, Contentful is going to recognize that I made some changes. It's going to automatically save. And now if I go back to here, viewing this draft content, even though this page is going to get pre-rendered during a build, it's going to be static. Uh, here, we can essentially server render the page. So I'll reload and we get to read that fresh data directly from our content management system. So it's a really nice way to be able to verify that things look correct before I actually hit that publish button inside of Contentful and make this live in my application. So now we're in production. We've looked at our logs. We've looked at our traffic. We have a pretty good understanding of how things are working, but how do we prevent regressions as we continue to increase the iteration velocity? So we want to encourage our teams to push a lot of changes and try things out in preview environments and ship things to prod behind feature flags. How can we do that while having a set of checks that essentially run over our code base? And we have a product called Conformance that does just that. So I'm looking at some specific conformance checks for the Next.js website. And you're going to notice that there were some issues that we've decided that, hey, we're going to mark these things as thing that we need to fix. And then we can kind of clean up our tech debt along the way so that we never get worse and we only get better. So for example, on the Next.js site, there's some security headers that are missing. We should fix that up. You know, we're dangerously setting HTML. Maybe that's okay. We can, you know, say, yes, we're okay with this. Much like you can say with linting rules, whether you want to allow it or disallow it. The cool thing about these rules is they go much further than just basic static analysis checks. So you can do some really interesting things here. We have a whole list of the conformance rules if you want, but really this helps us ship with confidence, both because we can instantly roll back if something was wrong, but also that we can ensure code base quality and health over time. The final thing for those of you who are Next.js users, you might be wondering, does Purcell use the app router for their entire website? And the answer is no. And this is important because we're in the journey, just like much of y'all are, of incrementally moving over our very large Next.js code base over to the app router. So our homepage, for example, this uses the app router. Let's say I pick something like uh, our blog. Our blog right now, it's still on the pages router. So we're in the process of moving these over and you know maybe even a little redesign here coming as well too. And we think this is totally fine. It's totally normal and expected, much like y'all with large code bases as you want to slowly and incrementally move things over. It's much easier to do that uh, over time rather than one large, as we call it, big bang migration where you do everything at once. That introduces a lot of risk and it can also be you know, a really hard PR or set of PRs to review. So we recommend inter incrementally adopting the new app router and you know that's how we use it as well too. All right, so that's a look behind the scenes for how Vercel builds Vercel with Vercel. Hopefully this was interesting. If there's other bits specifically that you want me to go further into, let me know. But we try to use all of our products as much as we possibly can to help enable us to build a better product for y'all. 
all the way from the framework level to Next.js to how we iterate and make a better application along the way. And then also, of course, to our production infrastructure that's serving the Vercel dashboard and all of the Vercel websites uh, for you all. So hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know if you want to see more like this. Peace.